receive a lot of questions about the 1031 exchange math. And most 1031 exchange professionals will tell you that there are four things that you need to be concerned about with 1031 exchange. They'll tell you that you need to trade equal or up in equity. They'll tr tell you that you need to trade equal or up in fair market value. They'll tell you that you need to trade equal or up in debt. And they will tell you that you need to acquire only like kind replacement property. I believe those bullet points are really only three bullet points. And here's why. Obviously, the most important one is that you're buying like kind property. And as we've discussed in other videos, like kind in real estate means business or investment real estate for business or investment real estate. So now we're down to two bullet points. The most important one is to trade equal or up in fair market value, contract price to contract price. So if I sell a property for $500,000 and after eligible expenses, I'm down to 475, then I need to buy a new replacement property worth at least $475,000. But if I've paid off some debt on that property, let's say I owed $100,000 to the bank, that only netted me $375,000 that went to the qualified intermediary. So I sold for 500, paid off expenses of 25, I'm down to 475, pay off a mortgage of 100, I'm down to 375. Where I said earlier that some professionals will tell you that you need to trade equal or up in debt, I'm telling you that that $100,000 in debt can be replaced by cash. So if you balance my two first equations, equal or up in fair market value, equal or up in equity, your exchange will be successful. You've replaced the fair market value. In this case, we talked about $475,000. You've replaced the equity. In this case, the 375. The math for the debt falls into place because I've already purchased the 475. I've made it work. I can replace the debt with cash, but I can't replace the cash with debt. And that is 1031 exchange math simplified.